Let's now turn our attention to creating the input controller script. All right, so this is going to be the actual script that uh, retrieves all the values from our input system. All right, so let's go and create our first script over here, and we're going to do a couple things here. So uh, inside of our code folder, I'm going to go and add a new folder called editor. All right, that's just going to be for anything editor related that we might script. And then we're going to do uh, scripts. This is for all gameplay related type scripts. Okay, so in here, what I want to do is I want to go and create a new C sharp script. I just right click on the scripts folder and we're going to call this IP uh, drone inputs, something like that. Obviously, you can, you know, you can name it whatever you want, um, but definitely try to maintain some, some sort of um, naming convention for all this stuff. Just, you know, to keep your own sanity. All right, so I'm going to double click this guy, launch it inside of Visual Studio. And the first thing that I usually do in here is I'll put this into a namespace. So we're going to put it into an indie pixel namespace. And let's just make sure that, you know, our code is basically protected from any other script that might have the name, same name, basically. So it's just a good idea to put it inside a namespace, just protects your code. Now we know we're going to be working with the input system. So let's go ahead and add the uh, unity engine dot uh, input system namespace in here. So we have access to all those code, all that code and all those classes and parameters and stuff like that. Okay. So let me actually make this a little bigger for you guys as well. And maybe uh, collapse some of these guys since we don't really need to see any of that stuff. All right. So uh, I'm going to come in here and we're going to do a region. And I'm going to put all my variables inside of this region. And I like to do that just to, you know, stay organized with my code. And then all this stuff, this is going to be all of our main methods, though we're not going to be using start. Uh, <clears throat> not that I, I think at least uh, we can always put it back if we do end up needing it for anything. For now, I really just need update uh, because we might be updating some values. So we'll just keep that in there for now. All right, and so what we want to do is declare a bunch of private variables. All right, so I'm going to say private. Uh, actually, the first one is going to be our cyclic value. And so that's going to be a vector two. And remember, we set that up as a vector two inside of our drone inputs over here. So it's a vector two. All right, so we want to get that cyclic value. So if I go back to uh, my code over here, we're going to call this cyclic just to keep it nice and simple. All right, so then we need another one for our petals. So we, this is going to be a float value because it just goes from negative one to one. All right, so we'll do petals like so. And we'll do another private uh, float and we'll call this one throttle. All right, very cool. All right, so what I want to do is I want to give other scripts the ability to get the values uh, from this. Now we currently made all these private variables, which means only this script, only this drone input script can access those variables. They're basically protected inside of that one class. And so what we need to do is we need to create um, properties for these C sharp properties. All right. So there's a really easy way to do it. Uh, you can just, you know, highlight one of the variable names, right click, then go to your quick actions and refactorings. And we can go and we can say uh, generate the encapsulated field and use a property. All right. And look at that. It automatically generates the property code for us. Now, in this case, I don't want any other script to actually set it. I just want to get the value. So we're going to get rid of the set uh, call there. All right. Very cool. So let's do the rest. So let's do pedals. So I'm going to say quick actions and refactorings. And then we're going to do encapsulate field and we'll get rid of that set call as well. There we go. And then let's do the uh, throttle. All right. Very cool. So it saves us a lot of time from having to write the code ourselves. Very cool. All right. So with that all done, all we really need to do now is to set up our, oh, and I forgot the end region here. All right. So my first clue is I had a little red squiggly line there at the bottom. Usually means that one of your regions hasn't been closed up. All right. So like I was saying, what we need to do now is we need to actually get the values. All right from our input system. So like we saw in our previous video, uh, let's go and make a region. We'll call this input uh, methods. We'll close that guy out. And the way that we do that is we need to uh, get the function name, all right, which is going to be on cyclic and on pedals and on throttle. 
All right, and we also need to basically uh, go and set up our player input. So I'm going to first just focus on uh, doing the script here. So what we need to do is come back to our code over here, and we're going to do a private uh, void. And we're going to say on cyclic, like so. And we'll go and put in our curly brackets there. All right, so remember we need to put in the input value uh, argument here. Let's we'll call it value. That allows us to retrieve the value that's being sent through that message. And then all we need to do is we need to set the cyclic to that. So we'll say value dot get, and this is a vector two. All right, and there we go. Easy as that. So now we need to go and set up the pedals. So we'll say private void on pedals, like so. And we need our input value. There we go. Call it value. And now we set our variable. So we'll say pedals is equal to value dot get, and that's a float. So we'll get that float. And then we'll do the same thing for our throttle. So we'll say void uh, on throttle. And we'll say input value. We'll call that value. There we go. And we'll say throttle is equal to our value dot get. All right, and this is a float value as well. Awesome, and there we go. So now we have all of that set up. Okay, so what we need to do now is, I'm gonna come up to the top here, and because I know that I'm, I'm always going to need a player input component um, for this particular script to work, I'm gonna add a require component up here. So we're gonna say require component, and we're going to say type of, and then we're going to do player input, like so. All right, that means that when I go and drag and drop this script onto the game object, all right, or in this case our drone, it's going to automatically check to see if a player input component is assigned to our game object, and if not, it's going to make one for us. So it just helps us even more uh, with efficiency. It sets it up for us. So let's go check all this out, okay? Cool. So what I want to do, let's go to the scene over here. I'm actually going to nest all the art uh, below an empty game object. So let's go make an empty game object here. And this is going to be called our, our drone. Okay. And I'm going to center it up in the world. So just right click or actually just click this guy right here and say reset. All right. That way they're at the same exact position there. Then I'm just going to drag and drop the drone in there. I tend to do this. I, I'll put all the components on this empty game object and just keep the art underneath it because we don't need to actually attach scripts to our art. And that's just there for aesthetics. It's just a visual display. All right, so now what we can do is we can go and drag and drop our uh, drone inputs script onto this drone uh, root or parent game object. So let's just click and drag that on there. And look at that. It automatically added our player input and the drone input script. So it's just it's setting stuff up for us. Super cool. So if you remember from the last video about uh, the input system, we need to assign our actions. So let's go to our input. We'll just go and assign it like so. You can also hit this little button right here and pick it from the assets. All right. And we will select our default map. Very cool. All right. And let's go back to our drone inputs and make sure that we save our asset. So the reason why um, I noticed that I hadn't saved it is because the um, functions weren't visible here. Now that I've saved the asset, you can see that on cyclic, on pedals, and on throttle are now messages that are going to be sent by the player input. And they're going to be sent to this drone input scripts because we are listening for those using these methods. Okay? Cool. So we got our input script all set up. We are now good to go. Everything is a working. All right. We can always go and test this stuff out too. We can go to uh, set uh, this to debug. That way you can actually see your values here. And we can hit play. And we can go and test out our WASD. And there we go. We're getting our cyclic values. Very cool. Test it out on the Xbox controller. That's working. Yeah, all that's working. So throttle's working. Pedals are working. Let's test out the arrows on the keyboard. That's working. In this case, you know, this particular controller, it's going to be way better to use the Xbox controller. But I want to make sure that, you know, if you don't have one, you can still use the keyboard. All right, so we are working. Let me turn our debug mode off. Go back to normal there. And there we have it. All right, so let's move on to the next lecture.